When I was 14, I was sexually assaulted in the washroom of my high school. It started in shop class. He would sneak up behind me and press tools into the back of my jeans. But not just me, other students too. I spoke up, but his behavior is reduced to kids fooling around. Boys will be boys. So, instead of labeling his behavior as sexual assault and making him accountable for his own actions, we were all given the message to stop fooling around, when in reality, he was the only one who needed that message. He didn't stop, and the assaults only got worse. I witnessed him grab classmates' groins, slap their butts, and expose his privates, among other things. My breaking point was when I was alone in the washroom using the urinal during class. He came up behind me and reached between my legs. I couldn't react. I was frozen in place. It took me a long time to understand that when somebody is sexually assaulted, their brains essentially freeze. There is no fight or flight possible. It took me a long time to forgive myself for not fighting back. But now I understand, I couldn't. My brain was in survival mode. I was embarrassed and felt alone. I promised myself nothing like this would ever happen to me again. I stopped using public washrooms and started having panic attacks. I couldn't concentrate in class and became hypervigilant of anyone who looked at me or came close to me. Eventually, I told my parents and we went straight to the principal and then to the police who filed sexual assault charges. After going through the court system, I appreciate how difficult it is for a victim of sexual assault to continue with the legal process. A peace bond was issued and he had to complete courses and community service hours as retribution. And then he was done. There was never a school suspension. Looking back, I'm sure it's because it might jeopardize his promising hockey career. Why ruin his life plans when he was just doing what boys do? After reporting the assault to the police, I was harassed by his hockey teammates for breaking the code. This is called revictimization, and it is very common after someone reports. They were relentless with their insults and rumors. But I remained silent because it's already been made clear what happens to those who speak up. I felt trapped and ashamed, but I was also becoming increasingly angry and volatile. Other victims report self-harming behaviors such as cutting, substance abuse, and suicidal thoughts. I continued to spiral downwards. I could not articulate my feelings so no one knew how excruciating my days were. I mean, how could some guy touch me in the washroom cause all of this? What was wrong with me? I struggled with what I now know is anxiety, PTSD, and clinical depression. It was impossible to focus on anything but what happened in that bathroom to my 14 year old self. He was not required to miss one day of school when I could hardly bring myself to go. I was a straight A student when I entered high school and then I was struggling to get credits. There was no reprieve and no escape until last year when I found my voice once again and started to speak out. It's unnerving and uncomfortable to talk about, but student on student sexual assault happens at every level of education, from kindergarten to university. Children are warned to be wary of adults, but no one warns them about their peers. It's easier to label the acts as bullying than to call them sex crimes. But that is what they are. Sexual assault is defined as an act that violates the sexual integrity of a victim. But we are so bombarded in the media with sexual images, it's difficult to know what our sexual integrity even is, or when to recognize when somebody has crossed the line. And when we do, we use euphemisms such as inappropriate touching. 
which downgrades the severity of the offense and helps to normalize it. Sometimes, a child who is touched without consent is told, well, maybe he or she just likes you. Or in other words, this is how it is, kid. Put up with it. This behavior is normalized, even expected. And simply the price you pay for being female or to belong to a team or to fit with the popular group at school. Perpetrators learn that they can get away with it if it's phrased the right way. We are just playing. The whole team does it. I didn't mean anything by that. Or adults will help to cover it up. Case in point, the Canadian junior hockey team. So, no one talks about it because to do so is to be ostracized. But we have to talk about it, ask questions, and demand transparency in our schools and on our teams. Because the price of silence is too high. These are your children and grandchildren. I was asked why I chose such a heavy topic for this year's speech competition, when majority of the speeches that advance are the ones that elicit laughter. I chose this topic because sometimes we need to stop laughing. We need to be honest about the prevalence of sexual assault in our schools. This is not kids being kids, and certainly not boys being boys. These are students who have violated the sexual integrity of another student. Standing up and speaking out is one of the hardest things I have ever done. But here I am, and I challenge you to stand with me. Thank you.